Hi, this is Travis Shaw, Public Programs Coordinator with the Mosby Heritage Area Association, uh, coming to you once again from the comfort and safety of my own home. Uh, I know it's a little difficult to get out and about right now and explore our wonderful heritage area, so we are doing our very best with the limits of technology to take you to some of those places and explore some of the fascinating stories that took place within our heritage area. And the one that I'd like to talk about today is, in my opinion, one of the more unusual stories. Uh, it's something I knew absolutely nothing about before I came to work at MHAA. And I guess that probably, some of you have probably never heard this story before, so I hope you enjoy it. Uh, today I'm gonna be talking about the story of Virginia's gold rush. Um, many people do not realize that at one point in time, Virginia was one of the top gold producing states in the entire country. And much of that gold production happened right here in our heritage area, specifically in the southern part of Fauquier County. So today's little virtual visit is going to focus on the Virginia gold rush. So gold had been found in Virginia uh, by Native Americans. They're picking up small amounts of it across the state. Um, some of the early colonists are finding small amounts of gold as well. Of course, gold is one of the things that brought colonists to Virginia in the first place. Many of those folks who settled at Jamestown in the 17th century expected to find gold just lying all over the place, expected to make an easy fortune. Um, unfortunately for them, you know, they, they were not successful in that, um, but there are trace amounts of gold being found uh, throughout the colonial period. In fact, Thomas Jefferson mentions it in his 1780s book, Notes on the State of Virginia. Uh, he described a four pound rock that was found on the north bank of the Rappahannock River. And within this rock, there was about 17 penny weight worth of gold. Now in, in modern terms, that's about 1 20th of an ounce. So again, we're not talking about a whole lot of gold. Uh, Thomas Jefferson didn't seem too uh, enthusiastic about the idea of Virginia becoming a major gold producing state. And in reality, it's, it's several decades after Jefferson writes this, that gold finally becomes a viable industry within the Commonwealth of Virginia. Now let's look at a map of Virginia. So one of those weird kind of flukes of geology, of natural history, um, basically what happens is there is a ridge of material, you know, quartz or quartzite material along the eastern face of the Appalachian Mountains that is really good, bears a lot of gold. And this band stretches pretty much from, from Maryland, Frederick and Montgomery County, Maryland, south across the Potomac River into Fairfax and uh, Prince William County, Falkir County, and on south all the way into, uh, believe it or not, all the way to Georgia and Alabama. There's about 650 mile band of material that produces gold. And within that band, there are kind of hot spots, and one of them is what they call the gold and pyrite belt here in Virginia, and that roughly stretches from Fairfax on to the southwest to Appomattox. It's the, the area that's kind of shaded pink here on the map. Now, this is where the majority of Virginia gold mines are, but there are some outliers. If you look all the way up to the top of Loudoun County, you'll see that there was a, there was a gold mine in the vicinity of Furnace Mountain. Um, there's a few outliers in the southwestern part of the state, but for the most part, Virginia's gold production is going to be based really on this narrow band between Fairfax and Appomattox. And as you can see, the southern part of Fauquier County, um, pretty much right where it's pointing when it says gold pyrite belt, is in that band. Now, the first gold mine commercial gold operation in Virginia is going to open in 1804 in Spotsylvania County, and that is going to be the Whitehall Mine. Uh, but within about 15 years, gold mines are starting to pop up in Fauquier County. The first of them is the Union Gold Mine. Um, that's established in 1818. And within a few years, there's going to be close to 20 mines in Fauquier County. If we take a look at this map, this map, uh, this very southern tip of Fauquier County, um, it was drawn in the 1870s, so shortly after the Civil War. Uh, if you look around the vicinity of Morrisville here, you'll see there's the Embry Gold Mines, the Franklin Gold Mines, the Bancroft Gold Mines, the Wyckoff Gold Mines, the Pollard Gold Mines. 
there are tons of mines all centered in this very southern part of the county um, near near summer duck near the town of gold Bain, which takes its name from the uh all of these gold mines that were established in that area in the 19th century um, now of all these mines probably the most famous is going to be the franklin gold mine established in the 1820s and it is going to continue operation for the next 90 or so years on and off now, Virginia, in the decades leading up to the Civil War, is one of the largest gold producers before the California Gold Rush. Um, it's in the top three states in terms of gold production. And during that period, from about 1820 or so up until 1861, Virginia gold mines are going to provide over 70,000 ounces of gold to the United States Mint. Um, this is a, a huge number and i like to point out that that's just what they provided to the mint that's not including gold that was taken by individuals gold that was used to make jewelry and things like that a lot of this gold is actually going overseas um, many of the operations that own these mines were owned by english men english firms um, many were owned by by people from the north including a lot of new yorkers so virginia gold is really going to to enter this global economy in a huge way. Um, and gold mining will be a major industry, particularly in Southern Fauquier County up to the Civil War. Now during the Civil War, you have the constraints on manpower. A lot of men are being taken away to fight, uh, fill, fill the ranks during the war. Um, a lot of the labor that these mines are using is enslaved. So many of those people will, will seek freedom during the war. So the Civil War is really a major, major detriment to the gold mining industry. And many of the mines will struggle to recover during the Reconstruction era. Um, one of the few that really does is Franklin Gold Mines. Um, as I said, they come back and they continue to operate until the 1930s. Uh, one of the other issues that's going to really impact Virginia's gold production during this time is the cost of labor and the cost of gold. Uh, by the 1860s and 1870s, many of the surface deposits, the gold that's easiest to reach, the gold that can be strip mined from the surface, has been mined out. And so manufacturers are going to have to look for other ways to get at deposits that are buried far, far deeper in the earth. So with that, you're going to have to dig shafts, you're going to have to have machinery to to not only dig these shafts out, but to process the ore and so forth. And so the cost of actually mining the gold increases to the point where for many of these mines, it's simply not profitable. Um, some of these mines actually import miners from England, specifically from Cornwall, where there's a long, long tradition of mining, particularly tin mining. And those Cornish miners are going to come here and they're going to dig shafts um, to get at these buried deposits. In some cases, these shafts are hundreds or even thousands of feet long. So it's a really impressive operation, but as I said, not necessarily cost effective. Now, speaking of machinery, this is one of my favorite parts of this story. Uh, anyone who has driven along Route 17 in Southern Fauquier County has probably seen these by the side of the road, maybe wondered what the heck they are. Uh, these are a bit of machinery that are known as hornet balls. Now, what you would do is put the ore within the hornet balls, and then a large machine would actually spin these like a big rock tumbler. The ore would smash around inside, bust apart, making the gold inside much easier to extract. Now, not only do they look like hornet's nests, but supposedly while they were in operation, the sound of all the machinery going and the sound of the ore tumbling inside made it sound like a nest of giant angry hornets. So I'm, I'm sure those were pretty interesting to see in operation. So by the early 20th century, many of the Fauquier County mines had shut down. Um, as I said, some simply were mined out, others the cost of labor and the cost of the machinery made it not worthwhile. There is going to be a slight comeback in the early 20th century, um, in the 1930s, once the price of gold becomes unfixed and it begins to fluctuate with the market. And there will be periods into the 1930s and in, even into the early 1940s 
where the price of gold would rise just enough that it would make sense to actually reopen some of these mining operations. Uh, but for the most part, most are gone. Um, the Franklin mine is kind of the last man standing in the 1940s. But even then, World War II is kind of the nail in the coffin for Virginia's commercial mining industry. Again, just like with the Civil War, these men are needed on the front. They're needed for war production. You know, gold mining is not a priority. So by the 1940s, Virginia's gold rush is over. And as I said, it's kind of a weird forgotten part of our local history. But it's a part that you can learn a lot more about. Um, now, unfortunately, it is not open right now, but in the future, I hope you get a chance to visit Monroe Park. It is a Fauquier County Park uh, located just outside of Gold Vein. And what you will see when you go there is essentially a recreation of an early 20th century gold mining camp. It's where those hornet balls are. Um, you see in this photograph, there's a number of early 20th century buildings um, depicting what life would be like for these commercial gold miners. So there are bunk houses, there's kind of a company office and things like that. And most exciting of all, they actually offer gold panning demonstrations there. So you can go there with your family and you can pan for real gold. Now, unfortunately, you cannot keep this gold, but some people do still pan for gold in this area. Um, if you do that, make sure you have the permission of the landowner. Um, but if someone wants to invite you out to their property to, to dig around in their creek and pan for gold, it's a really interesting way to connect to our, our area's history. So encourage you to go to Monroe Park once it's uh, open again. Encourage you to learn more about this. We'll have an upcoming blog post on our blog, See It, Save It, coming up. Um, all of this will be linked on our Facebook site and on our webpage. So I hope that you'll check in there. Um, again, thank you for bearing with us during this difficult time. We really try to get as much good information out to you guys as possible. And you know, if you appreciate that, I do encourage you. I know everybody's hurting right now but I encourage you to maybe think about a membership, think about making a donation if this is the kind of content that you guys like to see. So again, I'm Travis Shaw with the Mosby Heritage Area Association. Thank you so much for joining me on this virtual visit as we explored Virginia's gold mining industry. And I wish you guys all the best of health and we'll see you again soon. Thank you.